Okay, 6.0 owners, I got one for you today. That uh, should be an easy test for you if you had this concern. Um, starts fine. Idles great. Cold, hot, doesn't matter. Everything's great. Uh, drives fine. Uh, as far as it shifts, under light acceleration only. As soon as you t start trying to get at any throttle, or let's say if you're towing anything, I'm not towing anything right now, but this is a 550 with, you know, a stake bed in the back and boxes and tools, so there's enough weight in it. Um, as you can see, it idles great. There's no problems with that. Um, only two codes there are a P2290, which is turbo underboost, and then there was a, a P0401 for insufficient flow from the EGR valve. Well, the EGR valve's been checked um, by the customer, and uh, it, it looks fine. There's regular carbon on it, nothing plugged up in there, and actually it looks like it's been changed, you know, within the last year or so. So, uh, I finally got to it today, and uh, went out for a drive, and uh, I'll show you what it's doing. I'm going regular speed, right? Okay, I'll punch it. RPMs go high, doesn't shift, and of course we're not gaining speed like we should. It will not shift until I let off right there. That is a big indication you either have a restricted exhaust or uh, low fuel pressure. I've actually seen these run on my gauge uh, into the negatives on the gauge, and uh, it, it still ran just like that. It won't, it won't quit. Uh, initially you see we're driving just fine driving just fine punch it we just aren't moving you can hear the turbo spooling up and all everything else uh, the engine slowly revving up um, and you let off and the turbo does not flutter so I'm not thinking turbo is sticking causing that and usually when the turbo does stick or the EGR sticks open, uh, which we, we, we can lose boost pressure because the EGR is just dumping all the exhaust and it's not putting it into the veins of the turbo. Um, any of those two circumstances, almost always, if you let it go that long enough like that, you're punching it like this, you'll see <laughs> like a freight train behind you a black smoke. And we are not getting that. So we're gonna go back to the shop and check it out. All right, so I'm back to my original thought and uh, the things I told the guy I'm helping to check. Uh, I told him to check the EGR valve, make sure that wasn't sticking open. We pulled it out and it was clean. And I asked him to check the um, map port on here. And apparently he didn't check it because this thing is plugged up beyond belief with that uh, sticky carbon and once it's not getting a map uh, pressure reading which it uses to base off for MGP which is manifold gauge pressure which is boost um, it won't uh, boost up like that and let more fuel go to the fuel injectors and therefore we're dogging going down the road and I've already checked fuel pressure at 50 going down the road no problems I've dropped the cat and uh, no difference at all, zero. And I can hear the turbo spooling up and down, but no change. No, no boost at all. I'm getting 0.12 on the boost, PSI. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this port out, and we'll see what we got after that. Now I need to make sure that this thing is cleared out from top to bottom. And you can see how hard it was for me to push through because on this side it'd be sticky carbon. And on the inside it'll be that hardened carbon. So that boost is definitely not getting past here. And I can almost guarantee this is causing all our issues. So ream it out. I'm using a coat hanger. Perfect size for it. Heavy duty, duty coat hanger. Okay, so I just started it and I felt air coming out of there you know the pressure from the system at idle so we're gonna go ahead and reconnect this just temporarily without the clamps and then we're gonna go inside and uh, do a boost test 
All right, so we got a fancy little boost test on our scan tool, but um, you could do the same thing driving down the road, or if you have a boost pressure gauge, you stick it on that uh, on that manifold gauge port. So last time on this, I got 0.25 psi, and basically what it is is it's like an idle run up, and that's all it tests. It doesn't test it under you know full load and all that stuff. But it gives you a basis, and it should be around two to three psi on here. And then uh, you can go on the on the drive and check it from there. So let's see what we got. Start her up. It already checked the sensors to make sure that they're within spec of each other. So we ain't got no bias sensors. Looks a million times better already. We should be around two to three, depending on how hot the engine is. All right, let's try it out. Foot's all the way to the floor. Thing is flying for a 550 with all those boxes in the back and tools. That's impressive. That is two spec. Just goes to show. The little things can get you, and you need to make sure you can do a complete diagnosis and not just start throwing parts at it. In the end, that took a little bit of time and zero dollars to fix.